Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. A blink out. It's, you can't douse no water on it to quench it. It is the Holy Spirit keeping that that fire lit. The only difference is we got to start lighting, light, lighting them burners. That's it. And thankfully, we're doing that today. I hope that we're doing that today. I'm telling you, I feel that burning. But it only works if I consistently keep doing it. This is the most critical part of, de- of battling depression. Are you going to continually fight by going to his word? Are you continually going to keep going back to his word when things are rough? When, when, you, when, when this sermon ends and you don't replay it, or when you put that Bible down and turn that TV on, will you go back to that Bible because you want to be restored? Or are you going to give in again to that pain? And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be tough to go to his word and not feel guilt ridden. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to feel empowered sitting in church when, when the preacher's telling you, you know, what you, what you can do to overcome these situations and you overcome those situations and you feel strong and you feel complete and you feel like you can tackle this thing now head on and you run out the door and you get home and that depression's waiting on you. Them critical points, you need to feed your spirit. And that's lessons that I have to I have to take and listen to myself. Don't think I'm telling you this and I'm absolved. I'm learning more from me saying this sermon by God teaching me as I'm preaching it to you. We go together, brothers and sisters. My beloved, if this podcast hasn't showed you by now, we go together. There is no, I'm teaching you this and this is for somebody out there. This is for me and this is for you. I do this as my charge as to preach. And I've dropped the ball. I went weeks without saying anything. I told you I would not leave and I left. And and y'all have still prayed for me and kept me relevant. Relevant in y'all's minds and in your hearts. And I ain't going to forget that. But I did. Because I've let depression override those things that have been given to me. You, this ministry, this truth. There's no reason to preach God if I'm trying to find some gain from it. I preach God because it has been given to me as a gift. And I love him and I want to serve his will. And depression can sometimes rob you of that want and desire. But we got to fight together, brothers and sisters. I don't know how many times I've employed for, to hear from you and to talk to you. But this is why, so we can stay together. If I don't reach anybody from this broadcast, and anybody, if, if I reach one person that says, Eric, I'll stand with you, I'm going through the same thing, we'll go together, then let's do it. I don't want you to feel alone like I felt. I don't want you to feel like though you're surrounded in, 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 a, in, a, in a crowded room with people of loved ones, but yet still feel alone. I don't want you to feel that way. You got me. More importantly, you got God. And if you don't have a connection to God as as you would like, and you have some doubts and some questions, then you reach out to me. You reach out to that Christian that God has placed in your life that has a warm sense of love for you versus a quote-unquote duty feel. You know them. Those that give you their their speech, all depression will pass, this too shall pass, and give you no tools to work with. That ain't the person I'm talking about. I'm talking about the person that God has placed in your life that may not have the perfect words to say, but they stand with you through your storm. They are just as wet as you are. They brought an umbrella, but it got holes in it. So guess what? They still getting wet with you, but they're standing with you. We go together. We go together. Some things to understand about depression. And I think I, I, I highlighted on that, but I just want to show you that it's not alien to those in the to those in the Bible either. It ain't just us. It ain't just us after Christ, before Christ, during Christ, after Christ. Depression is part of human nature. It is the part of the fallen human nature. 
Just some questions. Some so depression can manifest itself through external circumstances. Here's First Corinthians. I'm sorry, Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse eight. For we don't want you to be unaware, brothers, of our affliction that took place in Asia. We were completely overwhelmed beyond our strength, so that we were even in despair of life. That's Paul. That's depression, despair of life. First Kings. 19, 3 through 8, Elijah became afraid and immediately ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba that belonged to Judah, he left his servant there, but he went on a day's journey into the wilderness. He sat down under a broom and prayed that he might die. He said, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life, for I'm no better than my father. I'm going to stay at there. And he slept all day under that broom tree. Hey, that's Elijah. Job 9.23, when disaster brings sudden death, he mocks the despair of the innocent. Isn't that terrible? Psalms 42, as deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, God. I thirst for God, the living God. When, I, when can I come and appear before you, God? My tears have become, have become have been my food for the day and night. First of all, I remember this as I pour out my heart. How I walked with many, leading the festive procession to the house of God with joyful and thankful shouts. This is David. So verse 5, why am I so depressed? Why this turmoil within me? Put your hope in God, for I will still praise him, my Savior and my God. Verse 6, I am deeply depressed. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan. That's David. Man, that's David. Talking about depression. Isaiah 38, 1, 2. In those days, Hezekiah became terminally ill. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, This is what the Lord says, Put your affairs in order, for you're about to die. You will not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face and wall and prayed to the Lord. He said, Please, Lord, remember how I have walked before you faithfully, wholeheartedly, and have done what pleases you. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Bitterly, wept bitterly. He got delivered some bad news, and he started to crash. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's, that's, I mean, it, it, Jonah, the sailors, verse 5, uh, chapter 1, verse verse 5, the sailors were afraid and, re, and each cried out to his God. They threw the ship's cargo in, in the sea to lighten the load. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down to the lowest parts of the vessel, stretched out and fallen deep in a deep, deep sleep. Depression. Fears of, that was under physical illness and exhaustion and, and external circumstances. Fear of others, fear of failure, First Kings 19.4, we, we read that, but he went on today's journey into the wilderness. He sat down under a broom tree and prayed that he might die. He said, I've had enough, Lord, my life, uh, uh, take my life, for I'm no better than my father's. I mean, that, this is truthful stuff that's going on. Serious sin. Verse 20, uh, Matthew chapter 27. Verse 3, then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he'd been condemned, was full of remorse. <laughs> and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. He said, what that to us, they said, see to it yourself. And he threw the silver into the sanctuary and departed. Then he went and hanged himself. Is that not, that's depression. Judas realized against serious sin. Serious sin can cause depression. Now that's causing of depression. What did he do? He acted on something. And acted it within sin. Symptoms of depression. A loathing of life and desire. We went across that. Deep, deep sorrow. Genesis 21. Chapter, uh, uh, ver let's read it. Verse 16. And she went and sat down nearby. About a bow shot away. For she said, I can't bear to watch the boy die. So she sat there nearby. She wept loudly. God heard the voice of the boy and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what's wrong, Hagar? Don't be afraid for God has heard the voice of the boy from the place where he is. Get up, help the boy up and support him for I will make him a great nation. Hagar weeping. Hagar weeping in deep depression. Futility of life. A sense of futility of life. Ecclesiastes verse, uh, chapter 2. Therefore I hated life because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me for everything is futile in pursuit of the wind. That's a sense of futile life. And this is just idea. 
I just want you to understand, I'm not trying to beat you down or, or, or run you back down after giving you such good news about how God's word can restore. But I want to show you that depression is a natural state of a fallen human being. But there's nothing God can't restore. Nothing that God can't restore. You understand that? Verse Psalms 23.3. I'll close this out with Psalm 23.3. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 51.12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Amos 9.14, I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. 2 Corinthians 13.9, for we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. Your restoration is what we pray for. 2 Corinthians 13.11, 13.11, finally brothers rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. That is a, ooh, that's a mountain of joy right there. That's, that, got some tears in my eyes right now. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Look for it. Grasp for it. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Galatians 6 1 brothers if anyone is caught in any transgression you are spirit you who are spiritual should restore him in spirit of gentleness keep watch on yourself lest you be tempted isn't that a beautiful feeling to have <coughs> and the Bible is ripe full of these nuggets of great truths to help you steal your 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 ship toward God We've been in this battle for quite a while, me and you. And, and it hasn't changed anything. We're still fighting the battles against our fallen sinful state, even though we are perfect in God. But our souls need to be constantly reminded we can't unplug from God on any, we can't take any chances. If there's any, here's, here's some added extra to add to, to, to help combat depression, feeling of hopelessness. Anything that causes you to divide yourself from God should be cut off and cut out. Anything that causes you to be distracted from God should be left behind, cut out, and cast away. If anything holds more importance than God, cast it out. Push it aside. It's not helping you. Hopelessness can only be distracted, but it can't be cured except by Christ. Hopelessness, the world can't feed you who are in Christ. It has no ability, it has no power, it has no say in helping restore you in balance only you who are in Christ can only be restored and placed back in balance by Christ and God himself you hear me that's all we have there is no substitution for Jesus Christ you who are in Christ and I plea if you are not and you have questions on your salvation Make today be the day that you start asking, is Christ, has Christ been knocking on my door? And why am I ignoring it? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you in your name for giving me utterance and giving me words and giving me power to speak. For I, I had none of these things, Lord, until you sent my Father and sent the angels that have surrounded me and have loved me and has protected me and prayed for me to restore my voice. I thank you, Lord, for giving such a, a servant of myself that's not worthy of any of the things that you've given me. And things, the opportunities and blessings I have squandered away from, from distraction and my, and my own flesh that is weak. I ask you to forgive me, Lord, and restore me back to where you want me to be. 
As I stand here, Lord, and as my brothers and sisters that hear my voice today, our storm may be great and heavy, but we know that you are resting with us, steering the boat to get us through. Lord, I just ask you to give us courage to steer into the storm than trying to turn away from it as it chases us and overcomes us with its water. Lord, I ask that you steer, help steer the boat into the storm so that we can reach the center and then go on to pass outside of it, Lord. But we can only do this with you. Lord, I ask anybody listening today, including myself, to restore our minds, forgive us of our sins and our trespasses against you and others, as we forgive those that we have, that have trespassed against us and has harmed us. Thank you for restoring us, Lord. Thank you for giving us dreams that, 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 that gives us faith and hope in you, Lord. Thank you for nudging us constantly and never giving up on us when we've given up on ourselves and our flesh. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Brothers and sisters, I thank you for listening. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for keeping me. Um, this is a two-part series, so hopefully you can hear back-to-back and get the message that I'm trying to relay. Um, and only by the power of God and Jesus Christ am I able to tell you anything and make sense of it. Um, and, be, and, and, and learn together as, we, as I'm speaking to you. We learn from each other. I learn from your emails. I learn from your phone calls. And I learn to grow every day with you. And we grow together. This is a church family more than anything else. It's not just a ministry you listen to on your favorite medium or social media of some sort or through podcasts. This is also a church family. And I hope that you feel loved and I hope you feel appreciated by me. And if I haven't, then let me extend myself to you and say you can reach me anytime through my Facebook page. Uh, forward slash uh, UNHD. You can see it down in the, in, in, in the description of this episode. And I hope that you understand that I love you very dearly. And, and, and the love that you have for Christ that you have displayed by holding me up in prayer is not forgotten by me. In Jesus' name, I love you so much. Hope to hear from you soon. In Jesus' name, amen. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.